I'd like to talk a little bit about, <laughs> hi Tyler. I'd like to talk a little bit more about our ball capper mechanism. What is this called, cap ball, cap ball? Okay, just start over. All right, Robot in one weekend, 2016. It's uh, been a very good build, I think. We've started off, looked at, the, looked at the strategies, trying to figure out what we wanted to play. We decided picking up the particles and shooting them was gonna be very critical. Uh, also, we decided that we wanted to manipulate the big balls as well. Um, we did a little bit of math, calculated out for the shooter what kind of velocity we needed. Um, we went on, we had our engineers look at what the velocity needed to be and I think they ended up coming up with something eventually leading to we needed to get about 600 RPM on a 4 inch wheel. Um, but we didn't have any capability to get a wheel spinning easily that way. So we had two different ideas. We had a wheel shooter that uh, we would need to do that. We decided to do a flicker shooter as well. So we took some six inch long pieces of Lexane and with a little bit of taper in that finger. And it spins around at a relatively low RPM and there's a bar that causes the Lexan to fold back and flick forward uh, and hit the ball. And actually that shooter was incredibly consistent because it's spinning at a low RPM uh, the, the flex of the Lexan is pretty consistent. And we were able to, out of the box, make shots really quickly in our first try. And we were really, really surprised by that. Uh, but we didn't want to stop there because we know from the past that sometimes wheeled shooters are a little better in that you have a lot more variation in being able to do different ranges because you can change the speed. Um, you might have the possibility of actuating a hood or something to make the angle change. So we decided to move to trying a wheel shooter since we know we had in the bag the flicker shooter working. Um, thankfully for us, uh, we learned that the Andy Mark Neverrest motor is a 550 class motor. And what that means is it's the size of the can and there's a ton of different gearboxes you can actually bolt to a 550 class motor. And as of last year in FTC, you can take a raw motor and put whatever gearbox you have on it. So we're actually able to dip into our FRC resources and from that we had a Bainbot's 4 to 1 gear ratio gearbox that would give us about 1600 RPM. We knew that was higher than the RPMs we needed, but we knew there would be some inefficiencies in the whole system and also being able to shoot further is good because you can always slow the motor down through the speed controllers, you can't get them to go faster. So that shooter, we prototyped it, tested it, it was maybe a little less consistent but not significantly less consistent than the flicker shooter, um, but the integration into our design made it a better choice because the flicker shooter, the ball had to get in a pretty specific spot. Um, you had to index the balls in there and time it with the, with the flicks coming by, as were with the wheel shooter, you kind of just have to get the ball up to it and it'll grab it and throw it out where it needs to go. And with the vertical elevator that we built, um, it would integrate really well. Now that vertical elevator is a very simple design. We took a two and a half inch Tetrix wheel and we just kind of put a little groove in it to take a piece of latex tubing. And we power that, that roller and on the top we took a Tetrix, uh, one of the tread idlers and we wrapped it around and put a little bit of tension on it so it pulls tight and that just spins in a vertical orientation with a piece of cardboard on the back actually with a slit in it so it flexes a little just because the dimensions didn't work in the time that we were working. And that works really well for just lifting it up. Now in the front of the robot, to bring in the balls, we took a piece of Rev Robotics hex shaft and some of their really nice little bushings and a sprocket and we drove, drove it all with some other Andy Mark sprockets and it's all chain drive to the front, got some flappy fingers on it and that whole thing spins. And so the lift and the front fan intake all run off of the same motor. We talked about a strategy uh, of recy uh, recycle, what we call an infinite recycling robot. And what that robot would do would be sitting near the corner vortex and could shoot the balls up the wall, bouncing off of some sort of arm to create that motion so that the ball goes in and always redirects back down the same side of the ramp. And we actually had, from just holding a little cardboard box up at the top, um, we also took our shooter later and tried it 
decent success actually of having something that could roll a ball down the wall or roll it at that thing and bounce it and have it come back down the same side every single time. We decided to not build one because there is actually a clause in the rules that if you have a design that breaks the game, the GDC can rule it illegal and then your robot would be illegal. So it's something that we decided it might be ruled illegal through the Q&A in the next couple weeks. And who knows, on Monday this, it might be ruled out already. Um, so we didn't want to put a lot of energy into building a robot that could do that in case it wasn't considered to be legal later on in the season. So we know that the, we, someone's going to have to post a question to the forum about a robot like that. It's going to happen. We're not the only ones who've thought of it. Lots of people have asked us about it. Um, but we prototyped it and it's possible. I think you could tweak it and get everything working. You could potentially score a lot of points. Um, but we didn't want to take the risk in our three-day form or our two-day format um, to build a robot that could be illegal later on in the season. On the back side for our lift, we've used the rev rail again with the whole all the linear slides on it. We've got a push-pull mechanism using uh, another uh, Andy Mark motor and gear set, and we've got we've prototyped a couple different designs. We've got a very simple forklift that we have a top wheel that could go on it if we need it. We've also got, we've pro prototyped our spinny side wheels, let's call them El Toro, which we learned from our robot in three days, the second year we did it. Uh, Joe Johnson's team, Boom Done, designed that. So we made a miniature version of that. Basically, we're gonna have a couple of shafts that will spin to help pick up the ball. We just received the ball, and it's a bit bigger than we expected. So we're actually breaking off into another team to also work on a forklift while doing so and uh, working on another competing mechanism at the same time. Andy Mark! And we've tested all of them. They've all worked okay. Um, I think if you were in a team and you had a lot of time that you could, if you get some rev rail, you can make a slidey lift, you can get all that adjustability in there and use that Rev Robotics product and potentially get something that works really, really well. Um, it just takes a little bit of tuning. Um, another thing that we did that I think every team needs to do is you need to 3D print supports for all of your electronics. You can get on Thingiverse, get your 3D printer. If you don't have one, try to find someone that has. You go to a makerspace like we are, get it to get it to 3D print. We use the Delta Maker 3D printer and we printed up some little supports and it makes your robot will survive through a tournament if you have these little supports on it. It's a very, very big deal. If you even look, there's even guides to help you support your USB ports on, on the FTC website. So make sure you do that if you can. If you can't 3D print, find a makerspace, find someone who's got one or something to support those USB ports. Overall, great robot. We're really happy with it. Uh, and we want to see what you guys can do in your next six, eight, ten weeks. Uh, coming up through the season, taking what we've done and the other teams have done and improving upon it, tweaking on what we've done and doing it better. <laughs>